If you're looking for a great alternative to uh, some of the proposals of screen recorders, this is one that I've just come across now, Nimbus. Um, this is what it looks like. It's basically, this is Nimbus Capture for screen capture. If you go to their site, nimbusbusweb.me, they've got basically kind of three products that they punt. The Nimbus Note is something very similar to Evernote. Uh, it's cloud-based solution. Um, you get different packages where you can have a combination of the Note and Capture. Capture is really powerful. It's a screen capture, whether it's for stills or for uh, video capture. The nice powerful thing about the video capture, it's WebRTC based, so it really is seamless. It integrates with your Chrome browser or Firefox browser. And Nimbus Clipper, this is uh, where you're able to do lots of other sort of finer capturing and clipping of information. I'm not too familiar with that, but we are gonna look at Nimbus Capture. Um, so for those of you who want to get to use it and to register it as a pro version, which is a paid for version, you have to get a free Nimbus Note account. Okay, so let's just look at the pricing quickly. I'm gonna to go to Nimbus Capture. So it is free. So if you go and get it in the Chrome extensions, you can install it totally free. It will have its limited features. Um, the pricing is real worth it. Uh, here you can see it's 29 US dollars for a year. So that's quite, quite affordable. And then it's linked to your Gmail account. So this is personal solo. This is the one that I've got. Uh, I had the free one, but because it's so economical and has some brilliant features. One of the features that are linked to this is the ability to upload your stuff to a Dropbox or to convert the WebM format that it records in, into MP4, etc. Okay, so yeah, $39 if you want a combination of the Nimbus Capture Pro and Nimbus Note Pro. Then you literally get five gigs and you can then sync your videos also just into your notes and have it, it's designed to be almost for educational purposes. The business and teams would work for like schools and that, where the students have access into certain cloud storage and the videos are synchronized, etc. Okay, enough said about that. Let me just show you. Uh, if you want it, you uh, let me see. I've already installed it, but you pretty much would go to a. Let me see if I can get the numbers capture. Um, it's going to give you this here and you can click on Chrome. It will take you from here across to the Chrome extension. And you can see here, remove from Chrome because I've got it installed already. And you can go, it's pretty much clicking there and you're up and going. That's for the free version. And uh, yeah, these are the features. Maybe I should just go through this. You can do key screenshots, screencast annotations so that you can mark certain stuff and there's some nice features that you can mark it and say that the the pen marks that you're using on the screen disappear after a few seconds etc so there's those nice flexibilities uh, of course uploading and sharing into cloud services uh, mobile web and desktop uh, collaboration workspace that's with the, the bigger packages and OCR for screenshots that's most likely with the big packages um, yeah, so this is a demonstration of how it fits together. If you are showing your screen and you are busy recording it, you, you can have your uh, webcam show up like this and it records. It's the, the usual and you have this sort of panel also when you have all the screenshots, you can annotate them, etc. like an editor. Um, and this dialogue you'll see familiar with this. This is how the video will go into the Nimbus note uh, from the screen capturing area. Okay, so that's a quick scroll through there. Let's get into it. Um, if I have to click, I did show you if I click to Chrome, it would take me, yep, I did show you this one. So it would be here. Um, if you don't notice the little icon here, this is a Chrome um, sort of instruction. You go to extensions you'll see all the extensions installed. And if this little pin isn't pinned, you see there it disappears. So you've just got to check that on so it's available. Okay, when you click on this, these items all here are for still captures. Okay, and they're quite explanatory. You 
select an area etc the entire page and you can select an area that the page scrolls down and it will record down the page so what I want to cover is the video recording specifically the action after it captures you could open it up in an edit dialog window where you can decide it's going to go to Dropbox or you're going to convert it to mp4 etc uh, or you could give an instruction immediately to do something so when you're done recording it immediately uploads it to this particular cloud service that's Nimbus this is this company or Google or Dropbox um, but I leave it on edit uh, because I from edit I can do maybe a little snipping of the video and then download it and for those of you who are familiar with um, or you happy with the recording you can actually have it immediately just download it after you stop the recording it will download so I'm going to just leave it on edit and we'll go to video okay so here's a few parameters and what is great about this is I think there's a combination between WebRTC and probably a little application that it puts in in some way um, if this is all written with uh, WebRTC and all in the browsers exclusively I'm, I'll be very impressed uh, which I think it is uh, when I look at how they've put it because every sort of dialogue that you open opens up in a new browser window to give you additional features so it's not like opening a separate app it's all browser based so this is to record your mic this is the normal external mic here record tab sound which means that if you if you've got different tabs open and you want to record what's happening in that tab you can enable it here but then you have to say record the tab okay so you've got to click it here and then it will make that available okay in some cases if it if it's not allowing the tab you're not going to be able to do that but once you click tab you will see record tab sound as a little button that you can flip uh, record the webcam again yes when you're recording if you do that whichever webcam you have attached uh, it will pop up and you can size the screen um, and move the little screen around only thing is when you record the webcam it's recorded as part of the video so you can't separate it later um, like you do with a Camtasia for example but most other situations like that would record a single uh, video image when it puts the webcam over it then the drawing of tools also as we showed early on there's a little dialog that pops here if you flip that um, so if you click that one on then when you start recording that little dialogue comes up with the pens you're able to draw etc okay so we're not going to go through that and add a watermark let me just show this to you because it's going to pop up a dialog box um, so the watermark you can put a text or an image and have a timer as to when the watermark will disappear so you start your video recording and after x amount of seconds it then disappears and these are the positionings that you have um, the general settings is quite a few here this is when you do a screen grab you can decide which format by default and the name uh, status where you can use these different variables to have the naming nomenclature there uh, this is screenshot settings again uh, I'm going to be focusing on video so I'm just showing you these things uh, the main menu settings these are these areas that pop out here you can disable in the end they'll they'll actually disappear from the selection so this is a sort of a customization you can create the art keys are of course for quickly initiating one of the things like if you want to do uh, a selected area you can go control shift 2 and then you have the little drawing area that you can make a selection for screen grab okay and then the other thing is the video here also the naming nomenclature there and then these three features have certain additional um, features attached to them enable instant recording to understand what it means you can click this little dialog I'll just do the first one uh, you will see it will do an explanation here uh, well I think it, yeah it, it goes through quite a bit of intense explanation of how it starts the recording and how you can get an instant recording and so forth I'm not going to dig into that now it's easy just to go and read up that uh, when you pop this open okay so this, this video is not intended to give you a, a hands-on of each of the features I'm just exposing you to the power of this Nimbus application and the easy way in which it can be used okay so let's get back in there um, we've dealt with that if you click on my uploads if you have the the package uh, 
the sort of um, combined package that I showed you earlier where you have notes and you have captured together then they give you about five gigs of storage so when you click here it will take you to that just know that if you do your recording once you're done you've got to download it or upload it to Dropbox because if you close that window uh, you don't have access to that uh, that particular video it hasn't been saved onto your hard drive it, it basically uses the Chrome interface to hold the video Okay, so if we go to record video, um, this is where we left off last time and we deviated when I showed you about the watermark. Um, again, if we want to see the settings pertaining to the actual video recording, we can click here and then we have auto settings, then it will check which screen size you're using and then optimize it for that. Or you could force it to be the conventional sizes. The video recorder, um, the output, here it's got default. I don't know what they mean by default. I assume it's maybe the WebM format and they've got advanced. So there's nothing you can choose. So you can't choose like a VP9 or VP8 or so forth. It's just giving you these options. Possibly with later releases, they'll give you options there. Uh, so you could leave it on uh, default output. And this is your, your countdown uh, that will show up. Um, this is to do with the drawing side of things. If you want after you do a drawing on the video while you're busy uh, annotating if you want it to auto disappear or auto destruct yeah you can say for example after three seconds that if you drew an arrow the arrow will just disappear so you don't have to constantly draw something and then click the delete button for that while the video is going uh, webcam again uh, i i use the irian webcam software uh, which links my phone and makes my phone a webcam it's worthwhile looking into this uh, software. I used uh, quite a few different options. This one works with a USB and Wi-Fi. You can connect it in both ways. And again, it's, it's very affordable and I just decided to get the application. It's a once-off purchase and then you have it moving and it, it's really great because now you can use your phone as a, a webcam. Oops. And let's see what was the last part I want to show. Um, so this is your microphone that you are recording from. Okay, so this, this microphone would be this Irian microphone. So that's where it will pull through. Okay, so this mic sound is actually that Irian setup. Um, I said, okay, now in my other phone, Google switched on. <laughs> Uh, how these things are all listening to us at all times. Okay, let me just show you an example. So um, for those of you who have worked with uh, WebRTC, the next screen that you'll see, you'll see definitely that it's a WebRTC interface because even uh, whether you're using Jitsi Meet, which is the uh, conferencing tool I use, or Webby, um, all of these WebRTC, they have this dialog that comes up when you screen share. So let me just click that. Uh, hopefully you'll recognize this. So it says share entire screen application or Chrome tab. Okay, so I would go with uh, sharing my entire screen and just click on share audio. Uh, because if you're going to be showing any video or footage on here, then you're at least be able to share that audio because we we have already initiated the mic on there um, just one thing before i go ahead i am not sure uh, if i mentioned that uh, yeah i'm going to get to the video um, the selection of the tab i found out with other uh, i did a video on a web rtc recorder also an extension which was just a, like almost a simple extension. It worked very well, but sometimes when you're recording in a tab and there's video streaming, it seems to compete with the audio. So it started clipping and the video didn't run as smooth as I'd love it to run. Uh, that's why I use desktop and I'm quite pleased that they have the desktop section here. The desktop captures it relatively smooth, no glitches in it. So that's why I recommend using the desktop instead of the tab. But that might be a limitation of my own uh, laptop. So uh, let's not consider that as a limitation of the actual application. It's probably my limitation. Uh, but the desktop works well for me. So let's go record again. 
and this is my second monitor and this is this particular monitor so let's just go and we say share again you will see the thing come up here very familiar to WebRTC so I'm going to just click hide on that one okay okay let's go and see what we can open and maybe just navigate somewhere okay I'm going to go to the goo and if I was busy doing a tutorial, I'll be going through and explaining whatever. Um, yeah, so this is screen recording. And I, if I want to pause it, I can go over there, over there and click there. It's going to give me the option to pause. So if I pause, I can do whatever I want to and then press resume again. And then we're up and running. Okay, so this is how it would work. And it's extremely, extremely easy to use if you're going to just start it up. It's literally clicking there, clicking start record. Everything, the defaults would work perfectly out of the box. If you're wanting to tweak it further, of course, you can fiddle with those settings that I've shown you. Um, but yes, that's it. So hopefully that gets you excited on that. And like I said, $29 for a whole year is worth it. Um, let's see what happens when I'm done with it. I'll click there and I'll say stop recording. Because I click that little checkbox, remember I came here and I click this checkbox to edit. It comes open in a new tab and it shows me the, the window here. So here I can upload it to Nimbus. I can save it directly onto my computer. I can save it to Google or Dropbox or YouTube, but with these three, I'll, of course, if I click here, it's going to ask me to log into my account as per usual. Uh, the video editor is a simple little thing you can crop and you can snip. You know, you just cut off pieces if you choose to do so. Okay, let's say done there. Um, and that's the video. This convert to MP4 is a feature for the paid version. So if you don't have the paid version, it won't be able to. Uh, so you get this on the free version, you'll get the WebM, no problem. So everything that you've seen up till now would work on the free version. Um, you'd get this resolution and that's the size there. So if we play that back, uh, there we go. So that's the video playing back. And I'm going to play it back in full screen. Okay, so there it's playing back in full screen. Excellent quality. Okay. So if I want to save it now, I'm going to just say save video and it's going to ask me if I want to save it, I'll say yes. And of course, if I do the convert to MP4, it's going to ask me which size I want to do it, whether it's to MP4 or to a GIF, and then I do the conversion. It will do the conversion in this window and then I've got to save it after that. Remember, um, it's important to save the thing first because it's, it's literally using the Chrome a browser experience to hold the file. Once you close it off, you, you don't have access to, to that file. I might be very wrong in this because um, it might be saved somewhere specific. Maybe I should just right click on here and inspect and see where it does it. Um, maybe there is a technical field where it goes to put it in. Okay. Yeah, so it seems to put it somewhere, okay? But I, I wouldn't chance that. What I would do is just, you know, you could actually even go right click on it and save as, and then go and save the video. Okay, so it will still do it in that way for you because it's, it's embedded in the browser at the moment. But there we've downloaded it and we've got it ready to go. Let's just open that and let's see what that looks like. Okay. Let me size that down. Okay, so there we've got it. There's our recording. Excellent. Great quality. And that was just a simple click there. Okay, so that's how it works. Let's say we wanted to record the screen here. Let's go through it quickly. Click there. Record video. Start recording. Choose the recorder. Make sure we've got audio selected if we want to record audio. Okay, you can hide that. And you can see the countdown happening there, three, two, one. You can also set up so that the counter counts on your page, but it, it usually pops up there. There we do, we're recording. When we're done, we can click there. 
Of course, we can stop it by having a shortcut key if we want to set it up like I showed you earlier. If I stop recording, there we go. And there we have our recording. Downloaded, finish. Great stuff. Hopefully that gives you some sort of direction for a screen recorder and either a free one or I can really recommend support the developers. Uh, it's not a high cost to support them and the more we support them, the, the better products they can build. I think this is quite an excellent product.